So yesterday we uh, got to London. I'm a bit scared of uh, getting away from this world. <laughs> Seems like uh, I'm missing Ministry Stump, and um, the only way I know is just bribing people. So let's see. Um, Hundred fifty. I think this is just the same prices as the new Winchester. Just uh, I'm going to confirm. Mission sixty nectar one hundred twenty. Yeah, all seems the same. Well, let's check it out, London. We also have princes that wanted to get off, I think. No, oh, actually, I am using her. Fuck. Um. Well, never mind then. We have a body of a uh, mushroom boy. Mushroom Man, the officer from Mushroom Infested uh, Ship. It's supposed to be still alive. Liberated from the from her prison below the earth and elevated to the heavens, uh, prickled with chimneys, mantled in sooty smog, here are old proud buildings transported block by pale block to the sky. Okay, so London was somehow moved the whole thing. Um, here are new edifices of soaring steel and stone and gleaming glass. The ultimate achievement of Victorian ambition, unhampered by uh, terrestrial concerns. London is a feverish brew of aspiration, empire, and appetite. Yeah, I don't want to lose princess. Though it would be nice to to just test what's uh, what this all about the second mint. Yeah, I guess let's check it out. Uh, let the princess set up a salon. She will be gone for a little while. You will have to manage without her. You poor thing. The princess will leave your engine, you may pick her up again, but only while the salon is open. Bye, bitch. The briefest of farewells. The princess sweeps away into the smog. For a moment, her tiara sparkles in a single beam of distant sunlight. She has left you an invitation. It is to the Red Salon. No further details are given. You'll have to find it and the princess yourself. Okay. How long will it be? So I can use mirrors or a skill check or use uh, to gossip to find her, I guess. So who's going to be replacement? Academe affiliation? Weirdly enough, because it's a golem, you, you wouldn't think it would be a learned one. <laughs> 
I guess hearts would be nice. Though this one gives plus two fails. Never talk to him. Huh. He wants honey. I actually have one stored, I think. Uh, the clay conductor has taken a berth in the back of your locomotive. He has made no attempt to personalize his cabin. All of his things, including the urn with his friend's dust, are stuffed into a suitcase that uh, sits forlornly on the floor. I thought we got rid of the the ashes. We we had a ceremony of saying farewell. <laughs> okay, weird. He performs his duties with the plodding diligence. He keeps up the maintenance of the engine, ensures things run. God damn it. Headphones keeping uh, switching to uh, the other thing. Um, okay. Also, first officer, the guy who works with other crew, basically. <laughs> I don't know how he fits in this role. Uh, Uh, he keeps up uh, the maintenance of the engine, ensures things run as uh, you would uh, wish them to, and uh, ostensibly uh, looks after the crew. He does not socialize and when not working, keeps to his bunk. Well, let's spend time with the Playboy. Yes. He doesn't look uh, up from a large volume of shit music. Slow hymns like uh, the drift of uh, continents made from the melody of late shifting earthquakes. If you attempt to engage him in conversation, he responds to this with uh, reluctance. He is content for the moment, his days have been tolerable. No, he doesn't know he does not need anything. When you eventually give up and make to go, he seems relieved. Hmm. Do I really want to spend my stuff on him. It's 120 coin basically. Better be worth it. I swear. Restore the clay conductor's voice. You've uh, overheard him attempting to sing but he gave up quickly. His voice was uh, gravely and out of practice. Some nectar might help uh, lubricate the vocal cords. But yeah, exploring is very important thing to do at, at the first captain's life, so the second one would uh, have more experience. I, would, I will have more knowledge about what is going to happen. Friend in need, the clay conductor fetches a spoon and several lumps of sugar. He mashes the lumps into the honey, then gargles the concoction. When he is done, you wrangle a little of his past from him. The clay conductor was in the clay co ho chores. Chores? Chores. 
day to check that. Core is the core. Cores? I know what that Quire. means. What? Choir. Choir? Doesn't sound right. Choir. Okay. Choirs. Uh, right. The clay conductor was in the clay choirs. His dead companion was a very talented clay chorister. I have hopes of finding someone with a, with as good a voice again. I one cannot be a chorus alone. I've heard tell of a clay man in the most serene mausoleum. The clay conductor tails off, clearly desiring your assistance, but unsure how to formulate the question. He stares at his feet instead. Great. What a waste of money. What the hell? Fuck you. Navigator. What's this about? Navigator waits uh, for you. I've been away for. I've been away some time. Your vouching for me would make a good impression. I want to make her proud. Huh? Buster's house? I don't remember what's up with him. Well, let's go. The house is small, but it is in a, an expensive location. It's, it is well kept, the windows are clean, the steps freshly swept. Asphodel is flourishing in an or urn by the steps. Uh, it still feels like home. The navigator gazes at the front door. It feels strange to know I'm just visiting. Ring the doorbell. The navigator stands beside you. He fidgets with the loose thread on his sleeve. Startled but delighted. The grieving matriarch herself opens the door. She sees the navigator and yelps. She laughs. It uh, disintegrates into tears. The navigator unfolds the woman in a hug and enfolds. Um, the matriarch uh, glares up uh, at the navigator fondly. I've been so worried. The moment I knew you. Uh, the moment I knew you'd signed up, it's so dangerous out there. What if something had happened to you, too? She hustles the pair of you into the drawing room. My husband's at work. I, he will be disappointed to have missed you. It's his mother. Um, I completely. I don't remember any conversation about his parents. Or that I. that he asked me to visit London. The Grieving Matriarch is determined he will join her for tea. She even refuses to let the servants assist. She is uh, rushing toward the kitchen when the navigator intervenes. Can't stay for long. I must impose on the cap. I mustn't impose on the captain. I prom. I promise I will come back soon. He draws the matriarch close and lowers his voice. I came to ask. May I borrow the key? I haven't been able to pay my respects. The grieving matriarch looks. Or. 
mortified. I'm not going to give them privacy. <laughs> For the old lady to react so strongly, this must be interesting, yeah. Remorse. The woman takes an iron key from a side table. Please keep it. It's not. I'm not going in again. Will the captain take you to the Empyrean? She searches the navigator's face. You look tired. Are you working too hard? I'm fine. I'm first officer, I'm doing well. You're you are all skin and bone. Is the captain feeding you? The matriarch turns angrily toward you. Please don't. Navigator's voice is barely audible. When when Alton I asked them to contact you, I asked the matriarch rushes from the room. She returns more composed and carrying a well-read book. You should have this. She refuses to let the navigator leave it, leave till he's promised to write and to visit again soon. Okay, well, 1000 experience, that's great. This someone... As something of value. Looking at you, Clayman. No, I need savage secrets. So I need savage secrets for uh, that accelerated industry place. It was called Barbazon Work World, and for this guy. Yeah, I really need to find a place where I could trade for Savage Secrets. I think it was at the... Uh, at the work world too. I could trade uh, Sky Stories, but not consistently. Navigator takes his feet off the desk of his desk when you enter the cabin. He's been reading the Epic of King Gizar. I always could get lost in it. Now we're reading, it feels more important. Whatever, dude. What else we have in London? Oh yeah. Percy Bleed comes to home, the mushroom boy. He has been a silent green passenger. His eyes are black to with gold. His cheeks wet with tears. Come on, give me some money. Uh, an inquiry at the ministry in one of their more approachable offices near the station results in an armada of black clad auditors descending upon your engine. Questions are asked, the crew are probed. Percy Bleed is subjected to a number of uh, in intrusive questions, all of which he answers perfectly. His memory and his lucidity seems much improved by, he by his time aboard your engine. He is eager to leave uh, with the auditors when asked. He turns his pale gaze on you one last time. Thank you, Captain. All shall be well. I've done... You've done us a great service. He leaves your engine with the auditors, trailing spores as he goes. Where is my pay? Fucking... Ah, uh, what? What is this? You've lost the strength of the sun. Okay, I no, have no idea what it is. Is it good? Is it bad? Losing strength doesn't sound good. I got a cryptic benefactor. Uh... Well, fuck. Where is my money? 
Londoners. God damn it. Hmm. Hunt for the shop that the Auroral Sommelier mentioned. Huh? Is it for wine? Only of a drink uh, from a shop? Yeah, I think that is. There! You find the establishment between the roofs of two collapsed houses. Under their steepled walls, it bulges like a tumor. You enter the floorboards, sigh in warning under your feet. The tiling ripples underfoot, like the black of an animal. Inside, there is there are eyes, I Isles? Isles? As thin as capillaries and uh, shells cold in thick black fabric. There is no one here. A dusty bronze bell rests atop the equally dusty counter. Ring the bell. Service. The sound is sharp and silver in the Merc. For time there is nothing, no indication of life in the store until... What are you? Why have you come? If you are a customer I have nothing right now, nothing I want to sell, comes a voice from the clutter. A body soon follows the voice, spilling from the gloom. It. Uh, elongates, stretching upwards, spreading into a flare of burgundy fabric. Under its hood, an unmistakably chiropteran visage. Chiropteran? It's a type of, of a bat. Order of bats. Huh? It's a Batman. Uh, Unmistakably corrupted visage. Its eyes dark and curious. It is one of the masters of the bazaar, though pronounced uh, adversaries of the empire. One of them is one of them still stands here before you. Imperious, impossible, and maybe slightly afraid. Ask about uh, the Hesperian cedar. Cider. You repeat the Aurora Sommelier's comments with gusto. Your words have struck a nerve. Gone. What he wants is gone. No, not gone, but almost gone. Little more than a sweet swallow and that isn't enough to do anything. Movement in the Tonic murk filled uh, with the carnivore purpose. You smell animal musk and hoar frost on rose petals, and fruit both astringent and sweet. Gone, but I could make more. I was Mr. Apples once, as I was once other things, other names, 
other people. The smell of oil and metal and the stairs stars. You could take me where I need to go. You can almost touch it. Do this for me and I will trade you something very rare, very fine indeed. A pause my company. Mr. Apples no longer has the beverage that the sommelier mentioned. Sure, have a vampire on board. Why not? I already have three rats, devil, some hobo, a mushroom. Add to the collection. The tiling ripples underfoot, like the black. I don't think he's a vampire, but yeah, a, a Batman, a, a real Batman. The tiling ripples underfoot like the back of an animal. Inside there is, there are, oh yeah, okay, I read that, this is the first red clad master glares at you from behind this counter. Could the Chiroparius, Chiro Characterious order. For one reason or another, you do not say no. A full compliment? Hmm? Appoint a full compliment of officer, including a mascot. Oh, he he's probably the. Uh, who was that? Watermaster. Nice. Oh, and nice face. <laughs> Veils, I like that. Mirrors. Oh, he's perfect. He's going to be our my quartermaster forever. Just what I need. Swaddled in Vermilion, it is a uh, lean and spindly or with the most velvety of ears. Vermilion. Yeah, contraband. I'm not sure if I want to do a contraband because it might pose some problems. I, I, I never left this place. Uh, let's talk about it, I guess. Smuggling. The middleman is nursing the same glass of beer. He began the evening with Ah, comrade, to claim it is a good evening will, would be duplicious, but it is at least an evening, and uh, here you are in it. He, wants an, he waits until you sit. My employer ha can open a profitable door for you. There are goods that Her Majesty's government do not want to see bought or sold. Prohibition begets scarcity, scarcity begets profit. One example of this contraband is red honey gathered by the Midnight Rose at Titania. Oh! So... Okay, I, I didn't know that. They, they do this drug at Titania. Hmm. Unfortunately, supplies have dried up. Prove your value, find out why and fix the problem. Okay, I can do that. I thought he would give me a contraband right away and I would have to smuggle it to New Winchester or something. 
liberated from her prison below the earth. Oh, just London. Just wander the streets. How often does one find themselves uh, with a spare moment in London? A day in London. The streets around St. Dominic's are thronged uh, with crowds. A senior minister used to be tried for corruption. Angry cries go up uh, from the mob, calling for the midnight cells. Okay, they change. But why would I want that? A Punch and Judy show is going on near San Dominic's. Punch has been replaced with the old son. Judy with her renewed majesty. Plain clothes uh, auditors look on from the crown. Whatever. Purchase a hole for five thousand sovereigns. The Silken Salon. The generous princess manages many affairs of court. It's another princess. The generous princess manages and uh, she cultivates alliances, forms opinions, sets trends, makes introductions, suggests promotions, and dismantles reputations. She attracts rumors like a lantern attracts moths. It's said that she fears the light of the sun and uh, that her gifts inevitably destroy the recipients. She can sometimes be found in her salon, where she welcomes visiting captains. Her salon stood gossip. Oh, 15 sovereigns and 10 experience? That's nothing. <laughs> so you can basically sell your gossip. Native Ministry stamp permit. Yeah, what the hell is this? Yeah, why would I want to do that? Connect the generous princess with your cryptic benefactor. So, benefactor is consumable too. No, I don't want to do any of that. Why would I? This is this seems dumb unless it's like progresses some kind of reputation gain. Let's just do it one time and see what happens. Nothing, you know, it's just uh, what it told me. Tea or two. The princess adds another spoonful of honey to her tea and offers you a dazzling smile. Really? How scan scandalous. Don't worry, their secrets are safe with me. Yep. You can draw a tobacco shop icon, you had to use coin. It's a bit confusing. The sign. Actually, let's repair first. Macquarie's tobacco shop. The sign over the door once read Macquarie and Son Fine Tobacco. Macquarie and Son Fine Tobacco. But 
since then someone has crossed out the word fine in the feet of honesty okay and apparently son one sec Back. So, back a shop. Mm, then, on a separate, more ominous occasion, they have crossed out and sun. The building is uh, embarked on a rapid descent into squalor. The paint peels. The windows are caked with grime. Inspect the wares. Macquarie watches suspiciously as you examine his shelves. Cheap tobacco, bad prices. The selection is unimpressive as uh, is the quality. Neither Albion nor the Rich has found a genuinely good replacement for tobacco. Uh, though increasingly frantic smokers have tried lighting up Virtually every example of sky flora that <laughs> has been discovered. A few skyfarers mill about, examining the lower grade flavors and uh, speculating on exactly what Macquarie is cutting them with today. The more expensive brands are untouched in their glass cases. You'd uh, wonder how this place managed to stay open, if it weren't for the fact uh, it is so obviously on the brink of closure, and probably collapse. So they don't have a real tobacco here. That's it, I just pff, inspect the wares. Return to the yards, out of the dry, into the oppressive damp. Other business. You make your way through the smog, which glows with the amber light of the distant clockwork sun. Investigate rumors of an underground railway. You've heard of a less than legal organization operating out of uh, the steam and sapphire yards. Hmm. God damn it, again savage secrets. I don't want to waste my affiliation. You've heard of uh, less than legal... Yeah, 
they, they pay for information and may offer work to the bold, the clever, and those willing to displease Her Majesty. Sounds interesting. Oh, you spend all your villainity. Will it going going to spend or I just have to have it? Unlocked with the affiliation and here we have you need to establish secrets, so I'm assuming this is not going to consume anything. Yes, okay. You have friends in low places, perhaps they know something. Alid, your connections are reluctant to talk. I hear the Daniables have been snuffing about less known, the better. London's deniable constables, the plain clothed uh, instruments of Her Majesty's displeasure, are persistent uh, superstition of the underclasses. Eventually, a dubious rag and bone. Is this like special forces? Deniable constables? Um, eventually, a dubious rag and bone man directs you to one of the engine houses. Talk to the bookkeeper, he will see you right. Have heard about the new street line. It occupies a tiny, smoky office cobbled together from corrugated iron sheets in the back of one of the engine sheds. It is stocked uh, with the nicotine stained uh, account books. So they have nicotine, but not the real tobacco. Hmm. Suspicious. Account books and boxes full of oily brackets. The bookkeeper looks up as you enter and gestures to a chair. Oh, I can deliver port reports to them. He maintains the company's shining public rec record. Anytime there is an auditor, he defends New Street's interests with a mountain fortress of files. Strategic Intelligence. The bookkeeper reads the report swiftly, makes a few notations, and files them deeply in his haystack of financial records beyond the attention of even the most persistent ministry auditor. Thanking you silently, he conveys that uh, you are doing important work. The New Street Line's gratitude. So, uh, they are different kind of rebels in this uh, Albion realm, I guess. A job on the side. He's deaf, but content to communicate through sign language or me messages scribbled on the pad of paper. Obliquely, he complains that he does additional work for an organization of, an affiliated with the government, which has an urgent need for up-to-date reports on other parts of uh, Albion. His patrons will pay for much intelligence to be brought to them, rather than the Ministry. What's more, he implies earning the organization's trust might open a possibility for additional work. more. 
Oh, Savage Secrets. If it gets. Eventually. Okay. So, wait. Savage Secret, what else? Unlicensed chart. Countless captains pass through the steam and sapphire engine yards. When they do, they talk about their journeys, the things that they saw and things that they fled from. The engineers listen closely. Not sure what this is about. Bookkeeper's Trust. What what is the mysterious further work he once alluded to? Have you been useful enough yet that he trusts you? So I have to spend my gratitude. To unlock it. Whether for invitation to Perdurance. Okay. I think we are done. What about the bat? The Chiropter the Chiropterius Hoarder colonizes your country. Half the cargo bay and uh, one of the cupboards in the galley. It fills uh, these spaces with uh, velvet wrapped boxes of varying sizes, opaque mason jars with sometimes, which sometimes ring uh, with tapping from within. Glass displays populated by half-dead and unblinking things. Periodically the Chiropterius hoarder can be found in the cabin it has been assigned, punched over a new item, a new acquisition. Ask about the hoarder's luggage. It is uh, your right as captain to at least have some knowledge of what you are transporting. The Chiropterius Hoarder glowers, its uh, expression glacial. When it becomes clear that it cannot intimidate you into leaving, your quartermaster sighs and relents. A jellyfish still alive, whispers, voice sawed down and growl. Uh, as it speaks, the hoarder trails a claw along each item. A dream of freedom piped into glass, burden spores that will never die, everything immortal or that aspires to be immortal. I'm making an inventory for them. Oh, again, savage secret? Come on. <laughs> Uh, and Nectar, they love Nectar, those guys. Let's compliment him. And we get nothing in return, of course. Flutter gets you somewhere. You can't have it. It hisses at you from under its oversized cowl. You explained that compliments are not meant to be transactions. The Chiropterius order is initially distrustful of your exposition and uh, then transported to this epiphany. Appreciation without condition. What a winsome novelty. It's not like that where I came from before London long before they just make and make they just take and take and take teeth slant into you but that's acceptable I take things too whose things and where did it come from here the wilderness 
lush and velveted with so many treasures, so many hungry tastes. There were others with me, yes, but some of them were as clever as me. I know how to make immortality, I know how to make collections that last. It earns it, its ears flatten, and this is why I must be careful, be small now. Maybe I should try a golem expression. It sounds like a smeagol. Trust in your officers is uh, contingent of knowledge of them. Probe the corruptor's hoarder's ambitions. <sighs> No. Okay, I could have, I could have gave gave him nectar or savage secret. It was a kind of a choice. Talk about its interest. What uh, does it care about? Perhaps you will find find common ground to build something that lasts forever. I have a dream. It confides, picking at uh, the hem of its claret cloak. An ear long and uh, velveteen droops uh, from its cowl. An old dream, an excellent dream. I could make my collection perfect to do this. There is a corpse that I must visit. Your kind named its Faith's Fall. Appropriate, I think. If I could travel there, if I had help and bronze, bronze wood, I could build the thing that I need. For a moment, its eyes are the universe, garbed and glorious with stars. But you, but you couldn't spare the crew, or the timber, or the time. Not for me, no. Not for me. It ducks its head. Yeah, not for fucking bad. Hmm. Now, oh, yeah, Mr. Menagery is the same species. In silence, the kind of the kind, the kind not like uh, a man trying to recall a favorite meal, uh, overtakes the corruptor's hoarder for an interval. At last, it brightens. It sells delicious things. Okay, helpful as always. Other masters? Indeed, what uh, happened to the other masters of all London? Complications happened, uh, to say the least. Her Majesty came to regret her assignment with us. She reneged and uh, fled the fifth city for the sky. Most of my colleagues remained behind, fat and sleek, and content at the heart of the new sixth city. But a few of us lightened languished But a few of us had languished long enough in the dark. We saw the chance to return home to the heavens. So in secret a few of us followed in you to the sky. Most of us did so quietly. One of us made too much noise, and her renewed majesty overheard. It had it had it has a job now. The hoarder sniffs. Tragic. Okay. So he wants 
timber and to go to some place that I already forgot. <laughs> Bring six pieces of bronze wood and five spare crew to Faith's Fall in the Ridge. Faith's Fall. I think this is a, a river and I saw it near Traitor's Wood. Like a waterfall. Okay. Alright. Uh, wait a second. So, we still have a lot of money, we could buy maybe armor, come on they don't have better armor, not sure if uh, Winchester has a better one. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Last damage, damage. Heat 35. A mine favored by captains eager to medieval pursuits. So oh, that's interesting. I could have a mine. Though, I don't know, well, yeah, I really don't know. Not now, anyway. Um, Yeah, prospects. Um, Brunswood for Parliament. Five consignments of good Brunswood for vital restoration works to the parliamentary undercroft. Voting Parliament lies to the east of London. Well, I guess we could claim it, but I need to find where to get Brunswood first. PNP Circus, but it's in a rage. Traitor's Wood, but it's in a rage. And Akles might be here. It can also be mined in the ridge and salvaged from Scribe Spinsters. Yeah. In the ridge. <laughs> in memoriam, gemstones for the mausoleum. Her renewed majesty has ordered the construction of a memorial chapel for the laborers who, during the promised days, gave their lives to lay the foundations of Albion. Five casks of Navarnite gemstones are quested for its grand mural to depict the blood, the sweat and the tears. Mausoleum lies to the north northwest of London. We'll see what I can do. Off we go. Also, break and recording. 